Are you sure this is a wise decision on your part? I, I have <laughs> Don't talk too long. You see, my, my father, my father was a teacher. Yeah, I know. And I, a professor, and my father's son. We're not known for being bullied, but I will try, I promise. I've got two anecdotes I want to share with you, an observation. <laughs> so, in the last month or so of my father's decline, my wife and I had the opportunity to speak with him at some length. And at one point, my lovely wife asked him what he anticipated that his journey was about to be like. And he shared this story with him. He said that he shared one time that when he, when he lived in Wisconsin, in a deep forest, that one time he was taking a walk and he saw a place where there was just a small beam of light coming through the canopy. And there, in that beam of light, he saw gorgeous flower called a creeping zoya. And this vine was not, had not grown in the light, but rather being a creeping zoya, it had grown towards the light. And getting to the light, it had flourished, and it was gorgeous and beautiful. And he remembered that image to his dying day. Well, when we asked him what that indicated about his uh, journey to come, he was a little bit vague. I think that image was really, if anything, more about the journey he had been on. My father was born in East Peoria in the depths of the Great Depression. The last of eight children, he did not seek to bloom where he was planted. But rather, throughout his life, he always sought the place for his optimal flourishing. He found that for 50 years or more with my mother in the of Illinois. But then, you know, all things, come, all things come to an end, and he found himself here in Fullerton. And not having anyone that he knew except myself, and I would, I'm always busy as a professor um, during the term. I, always tried to spare as much time as I could, but there wasn't that much to spare. But um, trying to start his life anew in his 80s, mm -hmm. well, he sought out his optimal fellowship. He, who here is from the Academy of Martial Arts here? <laughs> With you all, thank you. He found community. Who here is from his poetry class at Fullerton College? Oh, well, that's a pity, but with them, he yeah. found a support for his creativity. With Gloria, he found love and care. And I think, maybe I'm patting myself on the back here, but he was always a very curious man, and he always seemed to look forward to getting together with me, uh, largely because I think because of the intellectual stimulation I gave him. Mm -hmm. So that's a story that my father told in mm -hmm. his final words. Let me share with you a story that I have about him that made a big imprint upon me. Now, I teach classes in philosophy and religion. I'm constantly steeping myself in the words of great thinkers and, but you know what? One of the wisest things I ever said, heard, came from my father. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, I was starting to question and challenge the religion I was um, raised in. And I asked my father, what do you think, Dad, about this whole jazz with um, the notion of an afterlife and a judgment and heaven and hell. What, what do you think about that? He startled me with his answer. His answer was, it doesn't matter. I said, what? It doesn't matter? And he explained to me, well, you see, if there is an afterlife, isn't, if there isn't an afterlife, 
I won't be here. So it won't matter. And if there is an afterlife, a good and just God will honor the fact that I lived my life as best I knew how. And so I cannot see or expect that he would rule against me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was a little surprised just within the last year or so, I was reading up on the Stoic philosophers and you know what? My father had reinvented a bit of wisdom from one of the Greeks. Marcus Aurelius famously said, live a good life. If there are gods and they are just, then they will not care how devout you've been, but will welcome you based on the virtues you have lived by. If there are gods but unjust, then you should not want to worship them. If there are gods, then you will be, if there are no gods, then you will be gone, but will have lived a noble life that will live on in the memories of your loved ones. Somewhat similarly, the great philosopher Epicurus said, death does not concern us. When we are, death is not. When death is, we are not. Mm -hmm. Is that a little grand? Well, let me point, put this, point this out to you. My father is now beyond concern. He lived, as per Marcus Aurelius, I think, a noble life. And but those of us who are still here, who survive him, if we are concerned about honoring, respecting, celebrating, and, more to the point, perpetuating his legacy and the challenge that he has left before us is not to seek, like that senior, to bloom where we are planted, but rather to seek ever the place for our optimal flourishing, where we can find community, where we can find love, where we can find people that support our creativity and people who support our intellectual curiosity. I think that's the challenge he has left for us. Thus I profess, and thus I think, with his life, my father, the teacher, mm -hmm. has taught one final lesson. Thank you.